Hi everyone, my name is Artyom and today I want to talk to you about memory allocation and deallocation and the camel and the camel's runtime and a bunch of other things. So just to give you a bit of context, for the last few years I've been working on um, this product called Infer. It is a static analysis platform that can analyze uh, your code in C, C++, Java, and a bunch of other languages precisely and compositionally. It can detect something like memory leaks or lifetime issues in your C++ code, and it's used by a bunch of big names, as you can see here. It scales to massive code bases, so yeah, it's a pretty cool project. It's on GitHub, it's open source, check it out. Um, other than that, I want to mention that Infer is written in OCaml. And for those of you who don't know, OCaml is a functional programming language. Uh, it's expressive, it's safe. It is not as esoteric as some people think. In my opinion, it's actually uh, quite a bit more straightforward to use compared to something like Haskell. Um, it served as an inspiration for Rust in some respect and um, also is a um, spiritual ancestor to F-sharp, uh, which is like a camel on .NET. And by the way, I actually have a whole series about F-sharp, so if you're interested, check it out. Getting back to a camel, um, I think it's uh, actually uh, really easy to start using a camel, especially now that we have this beautiful website, awesome documentation, great developer tooling, LSP server, build system, uh, package manager. So it's really easy to just uh, start using a camel and write your programs nowadays. All right, and so about half a year ago, uh, there was a major release, 5.0 uh, release of a camel, and this is the first version of a camel that has um, the uh, shared memory parallelism. So the new multi-core runtime, uh, pretty much a uh, complete rewrite of the runtime. Uh, so huge release, lots of new opportunities um, can be unlocked. And uh, um, when you know the uh, 5.0 went public, I started looking into upgrading uh, infer, moving infer to use the new multi-core runtime. And uh, um, I mean, to my surprise, and actually huge respect to the multi-core team for their work on compatibility, it was really easy to just, you know, make things built with the Camel 5. I built infer with the Camel 5 and it just worked. Um, then I actually ran a bunch of tests and benchmarks on some of our production workloads. And uh, notice that the memory consumption uh, with the new runtime is actually quite a bit higher. Uh, so, yeah, a bit of digging. I reported uh, this on Discuss. Um, and TLDR is that in, in the uh, Camel 5, the way that Camel's process allocates memory is different compared to 4.14, where I mean, before you would uh, expect that if you allocate a bunch of stuff, then you free all this stuff, your process memory consumption should, you know, go down, right? And uh, this is true for 4.14, but with the Camel 5, the way that memory allocation works uh, has changed. And so if you allocate a bunch of things and then you free them, the actual RSS of the process doesn't go down which in some uh, workloads is not a problem at all, but in our workload, it was a problem. So the plan for this video is to take this test program that allocates and deallocates memory, see how it behaves when compiled with different versions of a camel, uh, browse actual runtime code to get a better feel for why it behaves this or that way, uh, including the unreleased version of a camel um, that has this patch uh, that uh, it will address the memory consumption issue I mentioned earlier. Um, and also, just to spice things up a bit, um, 
do the same thing but on macOS and see if the behavior is the same or different from what we uh, will see on Linux first. Cool, let's take a look at this OCaml program. Um, very quickly, what it does is it allocates a bunch of memory um, using objects of some particular sizes. And the, the reason we use these size classes uh, is so that we can exercise different behaviors of the allocator. Uh, because the kind of memory allocation usually depends on what size an object you need to allocate. So we allocate a bunch of memory, uh, we wait for the uh, user's input, release the memory, run GC, and then repeat. Um, cool, so let's run htop, and let's run this program with OCaml4. You can see, compiled with OCaml4.14.1, so let's allocate, let's say, a gig of memory using objects of size uh, 100 bytes, 200 bytes, 300 bytes. Okay, it did the allocation. You can see that RSS is a bit uh, over 1000. Release the memory and you see that RSS is back to like 13K. That's fine, that's cool. That's what we expect. Let's do the same thing, like we allocate the same um, a thousand megabytes of memory, but using objects of sizes, let's say two kilobytes, three kilobytes, four kilobytes. Okay, it allocates the memory, that's fine. Press enter. It releases the memory back to the uh, operating system. So RSS, 13K, that's very nice. Now let's do the same, but with OCaml 5, the currently released version. You can see, compiled with the Camel 5. Let's allocate a the same gig using objects of 100 bytes, 200 bytes, 300 bytes. Cool, so it allocated the memory, you can see here, watch this number. I hit enter, didn't go down. I like my, by a 50 megabytes or something, but, that's really not what we would expect. However, let's do the same thing, but using objects of size 2K, 3K, 4K. Let's hit enter. And we're back at five kilobytes of RSS. Now that's interesting. So I think it is time to take a look at the OCaml's runtime code just to get a better feel for what is actually happening um, when you allocate, deallocate memory. Um, before we dive in, just a quick disclaimer, I have spent maybe a few hours looking at the runtime's code and I'm definitely not a definitive source of truth when it comes to what is actually happening under the hood. So if I got something wrong, uh, feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, but otherwise, I think, at least I managed to convince myself that I got the gist of it right. So yeah, now that we're done with the disclaimer, let's dive into the OCaml source code. If we switch back to the program here and find this alloc single function, you will see that it uses uh, bytes.make, okay? Um, so let's try to find bytes.make inside the um, camel source code. So we're looking at bytesml. We're looking at the make function, make calls create. Okay. Create calls camel create bytes. Let's grab for camel create bytes. It's defined here. That's cool. Now I would like to navigate to this camel lock string. Um, I didn't have an LSP setup here, but uh, I guess C tags goes a long way. So let's do this. Perfect, camel lock string. And the first interesting thing that we actually see here is this threshold. Uh, if the size of the object that we wanna allocate is less than this constant, 
256, then it will be allocated on the young hip. Otherwise, it will be allocated on the short hip. Um, actually, let's do the experiment. Since we have this program, let's just do an experiment real quick. Make run four. Let's allocate a gig using, and uh, here, what was the size again? 256. So we need 256 multiplied by um, eight. That's 248. That's because this is in words. So let's uh, allocate, uh, let's say, 3K. We've allocated a gig. Now let's release the memory. And you will see that we actually have just a few minor words and a lot of major words. That's because we skipped the young keep altogether. If we do the same thing, but using, let's say, 1K, that's gonna bump the uh, minor words by a lot. All right, so let's get back to the um, source code. Camel alloc SHR. All right, quite a few levels of indirection here. That's fine. And um, I guess like what we wanna look at is this expand heap function. And here we would look into this thing that, actually let's go back a little bit and uh, just take a look at the docu documentation here. So the documentation says allocate more memory from malloc for the heap. And uh, that basically means that when we need more memory, we use malloc. We don't use something like mmap, at least. Um, I mean, there are some if devs here that sort of uh, have this other code path where we use mmap, but uh, ML malloc is kind of the main uh, mechanism here. And maybe just a quick, uh, Quick note, there are several ways to allocate memory, right? So the first way is to use this uh, mmap, mnmap uh, functions that kind of request memory directly from the kernel. And um, they usually operate with uh, kind of chunks of memory of um, kind of multiple of page size, which is 4K multiplied by whatever. Um, and there's another way that uses malloc free and you know the other functions in the family, uh, which is part of the C runtime, uh, and I use pervasively, uh, but it's still an indirection over uh, uh, some other mechanisms. Cool. So we know that we allocate memory using malloc. So if we go here and then yeah, so that's the if def around huge huge pages. And I don't think I have huge pages here, so uh, yeah, we're not hitting it. We're going straight to this branch and this, and probably this is where we get our malloc. Um, cool, so one th experiment that we can do right now is if we go back to the, uh, to the test program and we do make run four, uh, let's run htop, and let's, um, let's do the S trace on this uh, instance. So one, 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 four, one, one, six, allocating a gig using the favorite size classes done. Cool. And what we see here is that we have sort of a mix of uh, like M map, M on map. There should be some BRKs here as well, I would imagine. Yep, some BRKs. Um, and so the um, interesting part here is that uh, so this is the behavior of the allocator, right? It uses a mix of mmap and brk. And if we take a look at uh, glibc's malloc code, this is actually documented here. Um, 
I actually appreciate that it has like a <laughs> thousand lines of documentation. It should, it definitely should. Like for such a fundamental thing, you should have proper documentation. But uh, documentation here kind of describes that the allocator uses a mix of BRK and M map, M and map, uh, whatnot, <clears throat> to manage the memory. Um, but we will probably have a better look into the uh, into this later on. Um, all right, so let's get back to the uh, runtime. And um, what I would like to do next is open the OCaml 5. <clears throat> So this is actually not a vanilla or camel 5 trunk or whatnot. This is a patch to the GC that brings back memory uh, release and also GC compaction. So what I'm talking about is this patch. It reintroduces compaction uh, to the GC and it also makes the runtime release unneeded pages back uh, to the operating system. This is what I'm really looking forward to. This is what we need to be uh, able to migrate to the multi-core runtime. So fingers crossed, it gets into 5.2. Anyhow, let's get back into the runtime's code. And let's do the same thing we have done with 4.14, starting with the bytes.ml. Uh, we need to lo locate come create bytes. Um, camel lock string. So here we have kind of the same thing uh, around uh, so this threshold for young or uh, major heap allocation. And uh, uh, let's take a look at the lock small, what it does. Um, it does this, which does something like this. So this is a new thing, camel domain state. Uh, so domains are new to a camel 5. And uh, just by the looks of it, this feels a lot like bump allocation because we're just moving the the young pointer, uh, which is cool. Um, uh, let's get back and look into the uh, camel lock shared. Uh, again, we have some domain related stuff here, totally new. Um, let's see, camel share, try a lock. Aha, uh -huh. so now we have this uh, new constant here called size class max, um, which is 128. So if the size of an object, including a header is below the size class max, then we do pool allocate. And pool allocate is, let's see. Come on. All right, so I think we need to look into pool acquire. Yep, and so here we just see that uh, we're calling into a map routine. Camo platform, M map. Yep, that's a map for us. Cool. So basically, let's unwind the stack. If we want to allocate an object that is less than 128 words, we allocate it from a pool. And otherwise, we do a large allocation. And this large allocation uses malloc. So this kind of uh, explains this behavior that we have seen where we allocate smaller sized objects the memory is not returned back into to the operating system, but when we allocate objects of, let's say, two kilobytes and more, it does get returned back into the operating system. So let's run the experiment. Um, 
that would be make run five. So we have 128 words limit, which would be, uh, let's go a little bit below this, this threshold. So we allocate uh, 1015 bytes, like a, a gig of object of size 1015. Let's see. So we allocate a gig. Here we see we have allocated a gig. Release, nothing gets released. Let's do this again, but now we do 1016. We allocate the memory, hit enter, it gets released. So that's kind of uh, uh, the expected behavior, given that we know that we have this uh, sort of threshold here for either pool allocation or using malloc. Cool. Um, so I guess like one thing I wanted to do is to test it out uh, the same program, but uh, with the um, version of the runtime from this patch. So that's parallel compact patch. And uh, it was actually surprisingly simple to set it up. So I guess like one thing that uh, was super helpful is this hacking a dog which describes how to create a switch with a custom compiler and that's pretty much what you need to do switch create empty you pam install dot and that's your switch and so i have done this um, if we take a look at my opam switch i have this thing here which has this custom parallel compaction uh, uh, camel. So let's um, just also to demonstrate how this is all set up. I have this make file where I just um, execute compilation uh, with you know a bunch of different switches that I have here. One of them 5.c without dot 5c is this uh, custom uh, compaction um, enabled uh, OCaml. So let's do this. 5c. All right, we don't need this. So, um, two kilobytes, let's allocate a gig. And uh, let's do this right away. Okay, we have a gig. All right, not bad, not bad at all. How about... Something, oops. <laughs> um, all right, segmentation faults happen. Uh, let's try once again. I um, I think I need to save this core dump. It may come in handy for further debugging. Um, all right, so let's uh, do this again. Cool, so we have allocated a gig. Now let's release it. That's great. So we see, okay, another segmentation fault. I'm not sure what's up with this. Um, yeah, I'll check it. How about larger sizes? Let's say something like that. That's weird, that's not what I wanted. Again, I want 10 gigs. All right. Let's release. Huh. Okay, so we have released a few gigs, but we still retain nine gigs. Uh, anyhow, I think this is an improvement over what we had before, but uh, there are still a few things that I guess needs to be ironed out, a few kinks to iron out. But yeah, this sort of 
um, exploration uh, is, is, is very interesting and rewarding. So if you had this idea of hacking on a camel itself, but has some reservations, uh, you know, whether it's maybe too difficult, just get started. You have seen it's like super easy. The dogs are great. The build is very straightforward. It is super easy to make a custom switch and recompile your code using a custom version of the compiler slash runtime. So yeah, great stuff. Anyhow, next up, let's switch gears a bit and look into what is going on on the Mac OS. Okay, so this is Mac OS now. The program is the same. OCaml uh, versions are the same. Just the operating system is different. So let's run this program with OCaml 4.14.1 and see if it behaves in a similar way or not. Um, so let's allocate a gig using objects or our favorite sizes. Cool, we have a gig. Let's release it. And uh, nothing gets released. That's weird. Let's try again using uh, maybe different uh, size classes. Okay, so RSS actually went up quite a bit. We hit enter, nothing gets released. But this was supposed to work, right? Let's get back to Linux and just double check, okay? So we do gig, 100, 200, 300. We get a gig, we release, it gets released. Cool. Let's do the other experiment. We get a gig, we release it, it gets released. So what we are, what we see here is a macOS specific behavior. However, let's uh, run with the Camel 5. Um, so let's allocate a gig using objects of this size. Um, so this is, this should go through the pool allocation in the shared heap. We get a gig, we release it, it is not getting released. I mean, this is what we expect from um, or camel 5, like it, it doesn't release pages back. However, if we do the same with objects of this size, so we, we get the, the memory, it's, you know, there's quite a bit of overhead, but when we hit enter, the memory gets released. So the RSS changes. And with the camel 4, Nothing gets released. <laughs> so I just, I just love computers. Um, yeah, it's extremely confusing. But I guess like what would be um, helpful is that uh, kind of try to dis dissect this a little bit. So um, I guess like two things to mention here first. Uh, with OCaml 4, we use just malloc free to allocate um, elements to the pool that is then used to allocate uh, to, to create objects. With OCaml 5, we use malloc free only for objects or that, that are uh, larger than 128 words, but we do this malloc for the specific size, not the size of the pool element, but the specific size of the object that needs to get allocated. So there is some difference here with regards to usage of malloc between version four and version five of camel. So what will be helpful is maybe uh, to look at a version of the same program, but written in C++, because why not? Uh, at least we're, uh, we don't have a GC, we don't have this indirection uh, between you know, what we want, uh, what we request, and what the uh, runtime actually does. Cool, so um, it is sort of the same. So if we um, just take a quick look, we have the size classes that are predefined in the source. Um, 
that's all right. We can change them and recompile. But otherwise, we do kind of the same thing. We allocate a bunch of objects. Um, and then we release them. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So let's run this program. All right. So what do we want? We want to allocate a gig. We allocate a gig. This is just straight up malloc free. Okay. The uh, memory should get released, but it's not getting released. Okay, that's weird. Uh, let's take a look at these size classes. It's like we have 32, 64, up to 20, 256. Um, let's do this. Let's do 287. You can see I have a comment here. <laughs> so uh, let's do the same experiment, but using the uh, 257 size class only. We hit enter and the memory, the RSS goes down. So there is something funny going on. Um, and basically it seems that macOS has this threshold for uh, whether it will release memory right away or it will not release it right away. And this is actually where our next experiment will also shed some light. So there's this feeling, this hunch that the memory is not getting released right away, but is getting released lazily when uh, it needs to. And this hunch is actually supported by me just browsing the source code of macOS allocator. <laughs> so not a complete hunch, but I just uh, think it's a, it's, a, it's a fun experiment to try out. So let's say um, we go back to these size classes that are not getting released right away. We run one version. So let's allocate something larger, let's say 10 gigs. And you can see there's also some already something funny going on here. It's like it's hovering over 7500, but that's not quite uh, 10,000 megabytes. And also, let me just, uh, yeah. All right, that's interesting. Let's try to release the memory. And uh, let's watch this number. You see, like, there is something going on here, like destructors being run, memory getting released, but we're not releasing memory back. Let's run another version. Let's allocate something even larger. 20 gigs, watch this number. It actually went down from 6,500 to 4,200. This is hovering also weirdly. But we're getting there. Okay, so we're done. It. It kind of says that we, yeah, well, a lot of bytes have been allocated. Thanks, C++. Um, anyhow, <laughs> let's release the memory. And now let's see. The RSS goes up and this goes down. So there is this memory pressure that's building up and uh, the pages from the process, the first process gets reclaimed, pages from the second. Um, I mean, the memory pressure it has been relieved, so it still retains a bunch of a bunch of pages that have not been reclaimed by the OS. Um, so yeah, I guess like this is interesting in a sense that when you look at the RSS of a process on macOS, it is not actually the actual amount of memory that is used by the process. It is sort of a... Yeah, I'm not sure like what to make of this number uh, and or how useful it is. Um, I, I sort of, you know, we have this debate here whether you want to do something eagerly like we, we, we see on uh, Linux 
or lazily, as we see on macOS. Maybe like doing the lazy reclamation uh, is better for performance or efficiency or whatnot, but it's also extremely confusing. Um, I guess to wrap it up, let's do the same experiment on Linux. So the same version of the program. All right, so htop. Uh, okay, I don't need this. Cool. Let's allocate a gig using these size classes. We have a gig. The memory has been released. Moreover, let's do S trace on a process. We're asking for a gig. And this is actually funny because compared to what we have seen with the OCaml runtime, what we see here is just a bunch of calls to BRK, right? So when we hit enter, we don't have any M on map or whatnot, it's just not a BRK. So thanks everyone, I hope that was interesting. See you next time, peace.